today. Um, so my name is Amy Nye. I'm with the Sunlight Foundation. Um, here's the next slide. And I'm joined here by Anu uh, Nar Narayan Swami, uh, who is from our reporting team. But also here in the room with us is Gabrielle, Gabriella Schneider, our communications director, as well as uh, Bill Allison, one of our star reporters and editors. Uh, so we're going to get started today, um, and also we just want to say thank you to Denise uh, from INN for organizing this. Uh, Denise, if you want to unmute and say something, that by hitting star seven to unmute. If you're yeah, on. can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Hi guys. Um, just to let everybody know, I'm here if you have any questions for me or anything. Um, and I might be helping some of you um, in analyzing some of this data down the road. So um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. So for folks who are not familiar with Sunlight Foundation, we are an organization uh, based here in Washington, D.C. We're a national organization that really focuses on uh, transparency and open data, but also doing a lot of work in terms of unlocking uh, campaign finance information. Uh, so you should see our homepage right now. I'm sharing. So you can find our site at sunlightfoundation.com. And what makes us a little bit different from a lot of the other organizations is that not only are we a, a nonprofit that works on these issues, but we also have a team of developers and labs that help us create the tools and resources uh, to actually unlock the information and data. And then additionally, we have a reporting team, about 10 reporters in-house, that writes the stories to help explain what the data and what the numbers actually mean. So that's why we're really excited to be here today, uh, partnering with INN to provide this webinar, but also just uh, with Anu here talking a little bit more about our, our reporting and how we're getting our numbers and how we're crunching that information. Uh, but to just get a, a quick overview of the hour, uh, we're going to be showing some of Sunlight's uh, tools and resources and then um, to start off and then diving deep into uh, a story that we recently wrote and we're working on in terms of the state PAC data. Um, so I'm going to get started here at Sunlight Foundation. We have a number of different tools and resources, and I'm just going to show off a couple. Um, so I'm going to go to the tools page. It's very easy to use. And one of the tools that I'm going to start uh, this webinar with is a tool called Scout. And you can find that uh, tool at scout.sunlightfoundation.com, and you should see that on your page right now. And the reason why I want to show Scout is that because all of you reporters uh, and journalists are incredibly busy. So we really built this tool as a way of getting information to you directly instead of hunting the, the data and information down. So Scout is a search and alert system that allows you to find information on a federal level uh, in terms of federal bills and also state bills, but also lets you uh, search and alert for um, uh, things that are said on the floor of Congress through the congressional record, as well as um, regulations, and also a, a new data set we put in there is GAO reports. So a very easy way to get started with Scout is just by simply putting in a key term. So I'm going to put in campaign finance and hit get started. And then you'll see here are the number of uh, the different data sets that we're hitting with this key term. So this is an exact match in not just the title of the bill, but in the body of the bill. Um, so you see here we have campaign finance as it is mentioned in bills in Congress. And then when you're going through the different data sets, you can actually click on the filters on the left-hand side to then even uh, filter further down. So I only care about campaign finance bills that become law or is only passed the House or Senate. And then you can also see here on the left-hand side, I can filter down for speeches in Congress, and this is what is in the congressional record. The data we have here goes back to 1996. So let's say, but you know, I care about campaign finance. I really only care about it as it is mentioned um, by my delegation in California, for instance. So you can filter down to California, and you can see here that it has changed the uh, the filters, it says campaign finance, the speeches in Congress, and specifically in California. So you can look at the, the things that were said, but then also you can create an alert. And it's as simple as just clicking the create an alert uh, button here. 
Uh, and I, I'm already logged in. You can see I'm logged into my training at sunlightfoundation.com accounts. So you can just easily create one. And by creating an account and setting an alert, that just means that in the future, whenever campaign finance is mentioned in speeches in Congress, by the, a member of the California delegation. It will either shoot you an email, or you can even, if you really, really, really care about uh, what they're saying, you can even set up um, your phone number so it will shoot you an SMS alert. Uh, so I just want to finish the different data sets that we have. Um, especially for the local level, we have state bills as well. So you can set an alert for campaign finance, um, in state bills, and I'm just going to use the California example again. And you can set the alerts here. Uh, or for instance, let's say I actually when I'm going through these searches, I found the bill Follow the Money Act of uh, 2013. And this is the bill that I actually really care about. So instead of creating an alert for the general term, I can come into this bill itself and create an alert for this specific bill. Uh, and then we also have the federal regulations data. So this is campaign finance as it is mentioned in federal regulations. Uh, if you want, you can also filter down by a specific agency. So let's say I am interested in the Federal Elections Commission as they talk about campaign finance uh, in the regulatory process. Um, I can filter down by if it's just proposed or maybe I only care about it when it's finalized. You can set these filters as well. So it's a very useful tool. Um, and one additional thing I want to just show quickly in, in Scout, because this is not the, the bulk of our training today, uh, is to also show you that you can create feature collections. So here at Sunlight, we actually created one on campaign finance. And you can see that it's here in the home page. And by clicking on this, you will see that these are all the key terms that we think are important. Uh, you can also put in uh, sections of the U.S. code, and we also have the different key terms here and a number of different bills. And then you can easily just uh, jump, clicking by jump to a preview of results, see what is actually uh, being populated, being alerted by the key terms that we have identified as important in campaign finance. So there was a recent um, speech. Um, and then there's also a notice by the FEC about Sun Sunshine Act meetings that are coming up. So it's very easy for you to also just create your own collections and make it public with other journalists or other folks in your office uh, and, and really curate a, a collection that you think is important on the issues that you're working on. So that's just very quickly on Scout. Uh, and really sticking with this um, focus on states. Uh, the other tool I want to talk about and show is open states. You can find that at openstates.org and also it's linked to from the Sunlight Foundation uh, page on tools. So here are the open states page. And openstates.org is a standardized resource of all of the legislative information across all 50 states in addition to uh, Puerto Rico and Washington, D.C. So uh, it is a lot of data and a lot of information. And what you see here as the front-facing tool actually took over five years to develop and collect uh, the data in the back end. Um, and I'm sure for folks who work intimately on the state level with your state houses, many times you know um, that you know, the, the House and the Senate might not necessarily have the same information. So when I'm talking about 50 states, a lot of times I'm talking about closer to 100 different entities in which are trying to standardize the legislative information. Um, so the Open States is a fairly easy to use tool. There's a number of ways to use just get started. You can either put in your address uh, to find out uh, who your member is that represents you, or you can just click on a state. I'll use, um, uh, who do we have on the phone here? I think there are folks here from Pennsylvania, so I'm going to go to Pennsylvania. So what you see now after I clicked on Pennsylvania is um, the legislative profile of the uh, General Assembly in Pennsylvania. So how many senators there are and how many representatives there are. And we have this for every single state, including the party breakdown. And even this basic information a lot of times is very difficult to find um, on the state houses' uh, websites themselves because they just 
differ so greatly between the states. And on the left-hand side here, this is a dynamic map. So you can just um, sort of zoom through and click on a district to see who is the representative of that district. And we also have aggregated the total number of committees, so there's in the Senate and in the House, and we're showing you the most recently uh, passed and introduced bills as well in the Senate and in the House. And then lastly, what I always say is very important, especially for journalists, is to know the source uh, and, and how far back this data goes to. So we're showing you for each state in their state profile pages the uh, bills that are available and how far back we go. So in Pennsylvania, we actually go back to 2009. Uh, for certain states, we're trying to go back as far as we possibly can. But unfortunately, depending on the state, a lot of states don't even archive past their current legislative year. So what we're trying to do with open states is not just get the information for as far back as we can go, and, also, and we also are archiving it as we move forward. And we're also showing you how many bills there are in uh, each of the sessions. Um, so as I was showing before, you can just find who your member is, and you can click on that individual to find out a little bit more information about the legislator. Uh, so what you see here is their contact information for their district and their capital office. We are providing you with uh, how far back our data goes to uh, in terms of the legislative data. You can easily log in to follow this legislator. And this is actually coming from feedback from journalists that we've talked to. Uh, when, when Open States was in the beta phase, uh, I went to the Chicago Tribune. I was talking to the reporters there and letting them know how you can follow bills and all, you know, all of the tools that we have. And one of the reporters was like, well, you know, it's great to follow a bill, but for me, it would be more important if I can follow the speaker or a specific legislator, because knowing the influence that he has in, in the state, it doesn't matter what bill he's signing onto or how he's voting or, or, or um, you know, it, it doesn't matter if it's a resolution or a bill, it just matters to know what he is doing. So we uh, created this feature where you can just uh, follow a legislator and actually I'm not logged in, so let me log in real quick. So I just logged in and I hit follow this legislator and then you can just go into uh, your favorites to see sort of who you're following and then you can also turn on and off the bill notifications and, and just the general notifications here. So in addition to being able to follow them, we've integrated this uh, tool with our Influence Explorer tool, which I'm going to be going to next. Um, so to just give you a quick idea of the campaign contributions uh, for this member, and it will link out to Influence Explorer. And on the state level, we're getting this data from NIMSC, the National Institute of Money and State Politics. And we'll talk a little bit more about the IE data, the Influence Explorer data, um, in a little bit. And then uh, we also have information about media coverage, so when they're mentioned are their press releases. And we also have their committee membership information as well as sponsor bills and their most uh, recent votes. And by clicking on a specific vote, we can see the breakdown um, in how they voted. And everything is sourced. So on the bottom of each page, you'll see where we're getting all of this data. And you, you can click on it, it'll link you to the original uh, data source. Am I unmuted, by, by the way? Can, can anyone hear me? We can hear you. Is this Denise? Okay. No, this is Emily DeMarco in Pittsburgh with Public Source. Hi, Emily. Um, I think you might have just asked or answered it, but my question was related to the media part, the media section about a legislator. How is that data, like, where does that come from? We're scraping this information. So uh, depending on the legislator that we have here and depending on how, how difficult or easy it is to get that data, uh, so we're scraping for if they're providing uh, press releases. And in certain jurisdictions, uh, we're also trying to just scrape for their name as it comes out in the local, uh, local coverage. Does that answer it? Yes, thanks. I, I muted myself. Thank you. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so showing the recent votes, and then in addition, you can click on a bill to see uh, the 
information, more information about a specific bill. So for every bill, we show a progress ribbon to see how far along this bill is. So then for this uh, example, it's just been introduced. Like I said before, you can follow the bill. And you can also see who the sponsors are and any votes or actions if there have been any, in addition to uh, bill text information. Um, and another thing we have here are the committees. So we list all the committees, but we also provide you with an easy to use dynamic uh, search. So I just typed in education, and these are all the different committees that pertain to education or has it in the title. And then events uh, is an, another data set that we're pulling information from to see what are the upcoming hearings and what are the upcoming um, meetings that they're having because we've integrated it so you can easily just add it to your Google Calendar so you don't forget. <laughs> so this is a general overview about deep dive and looking into a specific state. But I think a lot of times for at least the folks here on the call, you're more interested in looking uh, for a specific issue or a specific bill. So as I was showing earlier with um, Scout, um, they actually get the data from Open State. Uh, so any of the searches that you're doing that you can do it here, but this is very much more specific on state data and state information. So let's say, for instance, I care about um, gun legislation um, in Pennsylvania. So I will just type in the word guns, and you'll see the different bills that are um, have been introduced. And I can click on View All Bill Results to then see all the different bills there are, and also we're providing you with recent action information. And then there's this additional filtering where you can go through, and let's say I only care about it if it's passed the Senate, or let's say it's been signed, or um, by session, by sponsor name, uh, in addition to type, let's say I only care about it if it's a bill as opposed to resolution. So now it's filtered down to only six bills that we have in the system. And while I'm here, I also want to just talk very quickly about um, a new function that we added. So it's, it's in absolutely 100% in the alpha phase, and this is really more for our reporting group, our team. You know, we're interested in the tools that we're building. Uh, but also for them in terms of writing stories, it's way more effective to have this information here uh, downloaded as a CSV so you can do the sorting, especially if, let's say, for instance, I'm looking at uh, all states. I'm looking for gun legislation across all states. And I hit search here. And now I get 11, 000, uh, 1,166 bills that I'm really not going to be clicking each of these pages to go through, then it makes way more sense to have this as a CSV. So we created a, a function where you can sort of manually do that, and it's completely in an alpha, alpha stage right now. We have not even publicized this, and the only place that you can even find the directions on how to do this is through one of the stories that uh, we did recently and that's uh, reported on our reporting group page. And we sort of took our, our readers through the process of how to get the data um, that we're using in this story. So at the bottom of the story, and I can share around the link uh, at the end, uh, and I think uh, maybe yeah, Anu can sure. just uh, paste into the chat box. So at the end of the story, we talk about how the methodology is and how to query the, the Open States database and how to uh, get a uh, CSV download it so that you can use that data and really play with the data. So it's completely in the alpha phase and you guys are the only people that we have ever talked to outside of Sunlight about this functionality. So if you do uh, take a chance and, um, and use this uh, new functionality, let us know how it works uh, because I know in the future we do want to make this a little more public. So we would love the feedback uh, from, from you guys. Um, so in addition to uh, providing all of the data, I also want to mention that we provide the information as well as an API. So if you have technical folks um, and developers on your team that can access and use the APIs, they can easily do so. It's a free public API that we make available so people can access the, the data and information. 
And in addition to the API, uh, we also have bulk download uh, for open states, and you can just find that at the bottom of each of these pages by just clicking on bulk downloads. So What's an API? What's an API? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and I, I went through that pretty quickly. Uh, an API is, it stands for Application Programming Interface. Um, uh. So it's pretty much the, the data source that powers everything that we do. So if you have a smartphone, for instance, and you use your smartphone, and I have, I have um, an iPhone, and I have the weather pane. So I go into the weather pane, and it tells me exactly what the temperature is in my, uh, in my location right now. Uh, and what it's actually doing is it's going up and uh, talking to and connecting with either the weather.com API or something like that. And it's providing, it's asking for the information. What is the weather like in this location in, here in Washington, D.C. Um, right now? And so it's, it's a, as a live interface of data where you can just uh, ask, ask the, the data stream questions and then provide live responses. So for the Open States API, it's updated uh, in real time so that when you have, let's say you wanted to write a story and uh, you're mentioning a bill uh, on, you know, any bill, and instead of just saying that, like, this bill passed, the house, we are still waiting on it in the Senate, you can actually work through uh, a developer and create a pane where it just have live data. So whenever you go to that page, to that story you wrote about this bill, instead of saying that this bill has only passed the house, we don't know about the Senate, it's, it's pending in the Senate, it will actually just provide you right now where this bill is at. Does that make sense? It's sort of a long <laughs> explanation. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'm going to move on uh, from the, the data, uh, the API, and the bulk downloads. And actually, if you have any uh, questions about uh, what an API is, you can go to our Sunlight Foundation page and then click on API to learn a little bit more about APIs in general. There's a video that we created to help people understand what the data stream is about, and then you can uh, browse through and try the APIs of the different ones that we have available at Sunlight Foundation. So that's a little bit about open states. I know um, we're trying to get through a number of tools so we can get to Anu's story and the work that she's, she's doing. But still, if you have any questions, feel free to just uh, chat it to us and uh, we will, Anu will provide you with an answer. So the next tool I want to look at, and that I have alluded to and mentioned uh, quite a bit, uh, is Influence Explorer. You can find that at influenceexplorer.com. Uh, this is one of our flagship tools in terms of really just connecting and putting the pieces together and putting in a number of different influence data into one place that you can find uh, information in. So it's very easy to use. You pretty much just start with this uh, search bar and just put in any individual or organization or company. And I always like to start, uh, as an example, I use Exxon because they just hit so many of our data sets. So you'll see here I put in Exxon and I see a number of results. And the reason this is so is because Exxon a lot of times they'll file under different names and under different entities. But I, I usually, as an example, just go with the largest record. Here is ExxonMobil. And you will see here, this is our, our front-facing uh, page where you can uh, provide new data for right now for all years, but you can filter down to a specific year in which you're interested in. Um, and you see it here for Exxon, at least for all years, the campaign finance tallies that we have. And we get the campaign finance data on the federal level uh, from CRP, the Center for Responsive Politics. Uh, folks are familiar with Open Secrets. And then we also, on, on the state level, we get the data from NIMSP, the National for Money and State Policy. Before you even get there. You see the campaign finance data? Uh, there are a couple of people not muted. Could you please move to the other side? Well, anyway. Sorry, go ahead, Amy. Thank you. Um, so you can see here there are uh, lobbying data we as well. Suppose. We want him to know it. Um, so we'll and you can see it. the most frequently disclosed bill. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. You're good. Thanks. Oh, my God, you're good. Sorry, we're just trying to mute a couple of people here because of some disturbance. 
He's there with us. No, no, not not to leave. Yeah. I think I did it. (laughs) And it's absolutely fine if you have any questions to just unmute yourself. Um, And you just hit star seven or chat it to us. uh, via the chat box on the left-hand side of your screen. So as mentioning, we have uh, regulatory data, and we also have uh, federal spending information. This is the contract information we get from USA Spending. If contracts, you tend to have contractor misconduct information. And this is all sorted by the largest amounts. This is in terms of penalty and then EPA violations, as well as advisory committee information. But for journalists, uh, like, like you guys on the phone here, it's great that we're providing you all of this information sort of sorted in the way that we're providing it by the, the highest penalties or by the most recent uh, regulations uh, or by these uh, big tallies and these lovely charts but for the muckrakers on the phone, I'm sure you guys are more interested in terms of how to get that data, how do you get that as a, as a spreadsheet, and really just deep dive and look at a specific um, donation campaign contribution. So you can do that by going to data. And you can see here, this is uh, essentially an advanced search that lets you put in specific parameters in which you're interested in. Uh, so let's say here, I am only interested in um, the office um, on state governor's races. And then if you get rid of any of these parameters, because right now I can choose for what cycle, but let's say I'm interested in state governor's races across all cycles. I would just uh, hit the minus sign there and it will eliminate the field, which means that it's providing uh, the data for all of it. And then I can hit preview data, and you can see here it's providing a preview of all of the data that we have on a state level for a state governor's race in terms of all of the campaign contributions. And there's a lot. It's only showing the first 30 of a lot of records here. Uh, And what you can do if you're interested is you hit download and you can download the whole entire data set. Um, so I know, do you want to mention some of the differences in our data? Uh, yes, this is Anil. So uh, you may find that the aggregate uh, data that you see on our site, that's the summary page that Amy went through when she was showing you ExxonMobil, okay. may be a little different from what you see from, uh, on Open Secrets. And the reason for that is our data is as of 2012, and we will be updating the uh, next six months pretty soon, but we ha- don't have that data in this yet. Um, so that's the main reason you might see a difference. Right. And the reason why that happens is because SCRP took a, a very long time doing great work in terms of just cleaning up the data and information. Uh, but what we allow you to do is actually download the bulk data, download the bulk CSV for all of the information that you see. So I just put on, uh, I just, uh, selected and search for Nancy Pelosi. And then you can actually click on view all campaign finance data for Nancy Pelosi, and this will also bring you up um, the search for Nancy Pelosi specifically. But then let's say I'm only interested in a specific cycle. Review data, and I can see all of these records and download it into one uh, spreadsheet. Um, so I also want to mention quickly some of the new features that we'll be adding to uh, Influence Explorer. And there might be some folks here on the phone that's familiar with a number of our other tools, one of which is uh, Follow the Unlimited Money, which is here. If you put it in follow the, uh, search for our, uh, the website Follow the Unlimited uh, Money, it will bring you uh, .org, it will bring you to the, it will route you to the page. So you don't actually have to remember this long uh, URL, but I'm sure uh, Anu can share that on chat as well. So the live data that you see here that we're pulling from the FEC uh, data and their information, we're going to be in- incorporating that into Influence Explorer. 
So we're trying to provide you with even more information sort of beyond uh, the information that's available right now from CRP and from NIMSP. And then another thing we're going to be in integrating into Influence Explorer is our lobbying uh, registration tracker. So this is the most up-to-date information you can find in terms of who is registering as a lobbyist. So I think that's a lot of the, the, the tools and the information that I wanted to show of Sunlight Foundation. Um, so I'll let Anu sort of take it over and talk a little bit more about the state PAC work that we've been doing and how we're getting that data information and also how you guys can get involved uh, and really look at the state PAC information in your state. Hi, this is Anu. So what I'm going to take uh, you guys through today is a new project that we've uh, recently done. In fact, we released uh, the main story just this morning. And this is data that looks at state-level political committees uh, across 23 states. How we got started with this project was um, when we were working on, with federal data in the last, uh, during the last election, we found that there were quite a few people, individuals, wealthy individuals who were giving to super PACs and independent, independent expenditure committees and dark money groups uh, at the federal level. And we did this entire series called Stealthy Wealthy, which you can uh, look at some more of those stories uh, on our reporting site. And um, we found that several of these people were actually playing a major role at the state level. So, so then, you know, when, when we had, when 2013 rolled over, we were, okay, we should look at what's happening at the state level. Um, so we, on our request, the National Institute of Money and State Politics digitized um, data for us, and we started looking at 14 states which had lax campaign finance laws, and started with that, and then they went ahead and entered more data because they could find it easily, and that's how we have 23 states right now, and um, NIMSP, I'm going to refer to them as NIMSP because it's just easier. But they are probably going to do more, and we'll have 50 states at, um, at some point, I'm sure. Um, so that's how we got started. And what we wanted to look at specifically was, okay, in Influence Explorer today, we have information about what the donors are giving candidates at the state level. And we have information about what kind of PACs or company PACs or um, any kind of political committee interested in affecting an election is giving to a campaign or are they making an independent expenditures? Are they creating super PACs in their state? Are they, you know, just paying for ads? So we could see all that and that information is available through NIMSP and uh, Influence Explorer. What was missing is one of the key aspects. Who is giving money to these PACs? And not all these, pa all these uh, political committees are necessarily corporations that, you know, set up a PAC. It could be individual organi or organizations with an issue or an ax to grind which have uh, relevance. So that's how we start. And what this data essentially does is it brings together all this and ties it up. So this was the one missing link that we had at the state level. And with part of this data, we are trying to, uh, you know, kind of complete the process. Um, so one of the first, one of the interesting findings was that of these, in these 23 states, there is at least $1.4 billion being spent. And that's, that's one of the uh, major things that you would find in, um, at the state levels at, of these 23 states. And this is other than the $6 billion that was spent at the federal level in 20, uh, 2012. So that was an interesting thing. A couple of other uh, quick things that I wanted to talk about is that when you're looking at this data, it's really important to know that, um, like, for different states, it's very different, uh, the laws in, in the various states. For example, California, um, they don't really distinguish between what kind of political committee is uh, actively placing ads or active in the ballot initiatives. Um, Oregon doesn't either, but some other states might. For instance, 
um, they might distinguish between a super PAC versus a company PAC versus a ballot initiative PAC. And it's important to know what your state level um, regulations are and laws are. And that is also one of the reasons uh, we can't really compare too many states because it's like comparing apples and oranges then. We have to make sure that all the states are in the same bracket. So that's, that's one thing that um, users should keep in mind. Uh, but specifically today, I'll be talking and giving examples about states and how you can work with it individually if you're looking at just one state. And if you want to do uh, comparisons across states, you should look at the various uh, state laws, understand them, and make sure it's OK to talk about all those together. Uh, moving on to some of our uh, major findings. Um, the four states that allow anybody and all corporations, all kinds of corporations, to give unlimited amounts are Missouri, uh, Virginia, Utah, and Oregon. And these are four states where there essentially aren't any campaign finance laws. The only law is that any person t getting money should disclose it. That's, that's how it goes. Um, and they had like about 141 million that was uh, donated to all these PACs in the 2012 cycle. Uh, another interesting fact that we found was um, wealthy people giving. There were about six individuals, 12 businesses, 24 labor unions. As you can see, labor is a big uh, player here. You find national level organizations such as the AFL-CIO or the National Education Association or SEIU giving uh, millions of dollars at the state level. And this does not necessarily include all the local initiatives and the local chapters of these labor groups. So when you're looking at data for your specific state, you may want to aggregate all that together if you're talking about a major labor group. And, but th these are the major uh, national level labor groups that are uh, in play at the states also. Um, there, another thing we found was uh, that there are about 13 states that uh, don't allow any corporate uh, donations. For instance, Texas and Pennsylvania. They, both these states, uh, they allow individuals or nonprofits to give as much, um, as much as you want. There is no uh, limit on that, but they don't allow corporations to give. Corporate PACs are still allowed to give. So there are about 13 uh, states in the 23 that we uh, looked at which come under that category. Um, and then we found that, so when we were looking at the 2012 FEC or rather the federal level data, one of the big uh, takeaways was that corporations are not channeling a lot of their money to super PACs. And one of the biggest uh, discussions after Citizens United uh, was that companies and corporations are going to be spending a lot of money on the elections and uh, on the outcomes of elections. But we saw again in 2010 as well as in 2012 that that wasn't the case. Not too many uh, companies were giving money for whatever reason. But at the state level, it works otherwise. We found at least 450 companies from the finance sector and 150 from the energy sector, which, was get, which were giving... 5,000 5, or more, and this is directly from their treasuries, not from their political action committees. So that was one of the key takeaways also. And um, you, we aggregated some data for a couple of the states, Missouri, uh, Virginia. Is that Virginia? Oh, that's uh, Missouri. Missouri. Sorry. Um, and I quickly wanted to uh, talk about how you can download this um, data. So right at the bottom of um, right at the bottom of the um, story on our reporting site, you will find um, a download section where you can download all the data for um, all the 23 states. And um, it is a text file right now, and I just I. It's a lot of data, so there may be some questions about how best to download. Um, and the best way to do it would be to save the text file on your computer and then open up Excel or any, if you are familiar with any other database um, 
tool, then I would actually go with it, like Access or Navicat or MySQL even. But, but um, if not, go open up Excel, and um, you would actually um, – you'll have to download the text file and then import it into your Excel page. And I think that should uh, work well for most people. And, um, and if it doesn't, please let us know, and we can either help you uh, get the data, or we can even uh, email you just the state that you need or something like that. So uh, please re feel free to call us uh, if you have any questions about how to download this data. Um, okay, so I'm going to take you through a couple of uh, states data that um, I have here. Bear with me a second. Um, all right. I think everybody can see uh, data I have here for Florida. Um, I just picked Florida because I wanted to take uh, people through one state and just discuss the different fields and uh, the context that this data should be put into. Um, and if you want some other state, call us or um, we can help you get data for whichever state. Um, so a couple of things to keep in mind is there are some, there is information about, uh, there are lots of null values, so please keep that in mind. Not all the data has been standardized, so the name field is not entirely standardized. Uh, there is a standardization, standardized name field also. In most cases, you will see that it is um, populated in some case if it is a completely new entity. Um, the National Institute of Money and State Politics uh, is trying to do that in the future, but right now it's not completely standardized. This is still in a semi-raw format. So you should keep that in mind. Every Anytime you are working on a top 10 list or any kind of um, you know, aggregation of data, please keep in mind that you might have to eyeball the data to make sure that you haven't um, left any other um, information out. Uh, there is a question there, is there a data dictionary record layout with this la data? Um, for the names, for the various um, field names, and you can go to Influence Explorer, and um, within there you'll find the various terms and how NIMC or CRP, uh, what they refer to. So I would advise people going there and getting the uh, d documentation. Uh, I think it's in the doc. Go, to, go up there. It's in data, and then go to documentation. Um, Amy can send out that link in a bit. So that's about the data. And for instance, here in Florida, you'll see filer state is what you need to um, see who are the PACs filing the data. And name is the donor name. So, um, and it's, it's pretty clear. Otherwise, you can go to um, Influence Explorer. They have a basic description of uh, the documentation there, and you can, yeah, you can get, get it from there, too. Um, just to quickly touch upon one caveat in the data is under the sector uh, field, that's column I, you will see, um, you will see a, not, a, an item which reads non-contribution. While doing any kind of aggregate uh, analysis on this, I would uh, leave that out for any totaling because um, that will include items such as loans or refunds or something like that or different kind of transaction, which is not a direct contribution uh, or in-kind contribution, and hence that should be left out of uh, any aggregation. So that's a couple of things about the data. Um, I wanted to take... Uh, you guys through a couple of other things that I've already pulled up for Pennsylvania. Um, I think we started working with uh, a couple of people uh, at the public source in Pittsburgh, and this is data I already uh, pulled down for them. So uh, I know you guys are also on the phone, so I'm sorry this is repetitive for you guys. but um, So this is the top 20 or top 20 packs uh, that we're giving in Pennsylvania that I had aggregated. And I have both pack and individual um, lists down there. And 
what I think people can do with this data is look at who are the big individual givers in their state, who, which, uh, which kind of other political committee are they giving to, and why are they doing this? What kind of influence do they want to have in politics in their region? That was, a, that was the main question that we were trying to explore when we started doing this data. And this gets you to the point where you can see where the money is going. And then if, okay, they are, if for instance, there is an individual giving to uh, ExxonMobil, you can go in and see, or rather they're giving, ExxonMobil is giving to one candidate, you can go in and see who, why they're giving to this uh, specific person. Um, and some of this data you can get at the state uh, in the data we just put, uh, put out, and some of it to complete it, you might have to go to Influence Explorer and get data from there also and look at that. Uh, and again, I did a list of the uh, top political committees that are active in uh, Pennsylvania. And you can see there are a couple of oil companies, and many of the Pennsylvania ones, interestingly, are um, also are one of the top ones at the federal level. So that was, uh, that was a keen observation I had for um, Pennsylvania. Um, so that is um, something about the data. Do people have other questions? Okay, so I quickly wanted to run through a couple of story ideas that I wanted to share with uh, you guys and see if you know, just kind of get you guys thinking on uh, what you could do with data at your state level. Uh, one of the things I'm planning on doing next is looking at this company. It's an a electric utilities company in Missouri. And interestingly, they, in Missouri, you can uh, take as much money from anybody. Um, so, <laughs> literally, that's how. <laughs> so, they were... Um, they were collecting money from uh, people within the organization. Amarin, this is the electric utilities company, they were, um, their company was giving their PAC money. So they were getting money directly from the treasury, which is something that not many states allow. Um, Missouri is one of them where there are no campaign finance laws as such. So, and you can, uh, they can, they were taking money from there, and then they were transferring it to the federal PAC. So essentially what was happening is the money was getting filtered to the federal PAC and then going to federal candidates from the federal PAC. What was also happening is that the PAC money, once it came from the Treasury, was going to at least about 50 or 60 candidates at the state level. So I wanted to explore that and look at the big companies that were giving in states where this is commonly happening. Um, so that's one of the ideas. And another thing is actually looking at um, the big individual donors. One of the stories we're working on right now is uh, this person called uh, Brossage. I, I don't think I'm pronouncing his name right, but um, he's from Texas. And similarly, he was giving millions to various Texas PACs. So we're trying to explore what was he trying to gain. It's not up on the site yet. Yeah. So we're still re researching this, and uh, we should be done with it pretty soon. These are a couple of things that we are exploring to do with this data at the next level. And also, you know, it may be, you guys might al already have ideas whom to look at because you're working on the field in the local areas. And I think that's the main uh, takeaway for you guys with this data is looking at local donors, local individuals, local companies that are giving uh, in a big way. Once you have the companies, for instance, you can go back and look at what are they trying to do, what kind of legislation they're trying to push in um, at the state level, so what their lobbying patterns are. And you can find some of the lobbying data at NIMSPE's site, um, or I've actually had more luck looking at lobbying uh, at the state level within the uh, Secretary of State side or the Ethics Commission, wherever they collect the lobbying data. So uh, it's a combination of both. Um, one of the things that I touched upon uh, in the story that we published today was about console energy. And for instance, they are, uh, 
they're a company based in Pennsylvania, and they're leaving a footprint politically in terms of donations to state PACs and to uh, candidates in Pennsylvania and Virginia. And one of the main things that they were after in uh, Virginia in the last couple of years is um, they were lobbying for property issues and natural gas rights. And they were giving to a whole bunch of people, uh, including uh, Cuccinelli, who's running for uh, governor next year. And now there's actually an ethics investigation, which is looking at emails that went on between his uh, office and console energy at the same time when they were giving him money. Um, so it's, it's an interesting nexus that, uh, you know, that I found traces of in this data. For instance, he'd given 150,000 uh, to the, a, the governor's office. So that was interesting. So there could be uh, stories like that which, uh, and companies which are already in trouble that can be searched in this data to find interesting, um, yeah, that's the one, interesting notes about it. Um, so that's probably taking you guys through the data, and uh, if you guys have any questions about the data later on when you go back and look, can't download the data, please come back. We will, uh, we will help you get the data. Um, also, I wanted to put it out there that uh, we are really keen that people use this data. Um, so we are providing services to aggregate some of these. If you want top 10 lists for your state, please let us know. We'd be happy to uh, do some number crunching for you guys, at least for the next couple of days. And Denise, uh, and then I'm going on vacation um, soon after, uh, end of next week. So Denise has uh, agreed to do some of the number crunching for you guys. So I'm going to share all this data, take uh, Denise through how I did it and the intricacies of the data so she can help you guys also at a later stage if I'm not available. So. Yeah, so I, I think we went through definitely a lot of different tools and resources that we can provide here at Sunlight Foundation uh, for you guys. So if anyone have any questions, we'll be more than happy to take them. Questions, story ideas. Or you can chat it to us. Okay. And just as a reminder, hit star seven to unmute yourself. Anyone have anything to add in the room? Oh, there's uh, there a question on the phone? Yeah, not so much a question, but I'm a little overwhelmed with all of the information. This is I, Emily DeMarco in Pittsburgh with Public Source, but I just want to say how excited I am mostly for the, the parts of the, your presentation that you mentioned, you know, you can download the data here and there and everywhere, and that just, <laughs> you know, is, is pretty incredible to see, so thanks. Uh, we have our emails out there, so, you know, I know we did a lot in an hour, uh, but if you guys go back and have a question, email us or call us, we'd be happy to help you all. Mm -hmm. Okay. And for, folks, and for folks, this is Gabriella, for folks who want to become a little bit more familiar with some of the sites that Amy reviewed in the first part of the hour, our Sunlight Academy has some nice walkthrough tutorials at, uh, at training.sunlightfoundation.com. And, you know, any, any folks who um, also want to just work uh, on stories not related to what we discussed today, feel free to get in touch with us. Um, my email is gab, G-A-B, sunlightfoundation.com. Um, we often collaborate with uh, media groups and also uh, provide expertise if you need a really good quote or something like that, or you need a second pair of eyes, or you just want to bounce off an idea for a story, we're happy to work with you. Don't yeah, just to add, I mean, I think the most interesting thing here is that this, with this new state pack data, you can really kind of dig into uh, you know a lot of things, and we feel like uh, you know we know uh, some people who are active on the national level, but there's a lot of players who are big at the state level, and we feel like you'll be able to recognize the names much more easily than we will, and figure out who's interesting. And Anu mentioned uh, W. E. Bosarge. We were looking at. We found in Scout that this is somebody who was prominent enough in Texas to have the Texas legislature this year introduce bills to commend both him and his wife for their, uh, their years of service. And just by putting his name into Scout, we found that information where you can find it from 50 states too directly. 
So I would, I, you know, just highly recommend digging into this data, looking at the names, running some of them through um, uh, 50 states. Do they turn up in legislation? Are there bills about them? Are they mentioned in, in floor speeches? And, uh, and really dig into it, and I'm sure you'll find some great stuff. Hi, guys. It's Denise. And I just wanted to say thank you to both of you, Amy and Anu, for going through all of this for us. I know um, I learned a lot about your tools and the, the possibilities there. And so I think you'll be seeing some, some good stories come out of our members. So, so I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Denise, for uh, setting this all up. OK, great. Well, if there are no more questions, I don't want to keep us uh, for the extended period of time, and we would we well, can close this up within one perfect hour of, of training. Uh, so our emails are on, on the page right now. Feel free to shoot us an email um, or you know, um, drop, give us a call um, as well. Um, and we can help you with uh, any questions that you have or working through the tools um, and anything like that. So we really are we're just excited to have you guys on the phone and that we can even provide this uh, demonstration and tutorial about some of the things that we're working on. Oh, looks like we have a question. So how do you know when the data was last updated? How often is it updated? And that's a great question. Uh, and actually, in every single one of our tools, and I can uh, I'm share in my desktop right now, uh, we provide uh, information about the data. So you go to About Us and Scout, we talk about all of our data and how often it's updated. So we show you from bills in Congress, uh, we have 2009 to the present, uh, speeches in Congress that goes back to 1996 and, and so forth. So every single one of our tools provide this information and in either the data or the methodology section. Uh, and then for open states, as I mentioned before, state information is notorious for being very um, uneven in terms of the quality and how often they're, they're updated. But we scrape all of that information. Everything on the Open States page uh, on the site is no more than 24 hours old. So we have a scraper that goes through every single one of the state legislatures. And it also depends on the state uh, on how technologically savvy they are. So as I was mentioning before, the API. So uh, uh, in New York in the Senate, for instance, they actually have an open API. So we just tap directly into their data. So whatever they have uh, that's you know, up to date is exactly what we will have. Um, so it really it varies by the state itself in terms of how they provide the information. But everything on open states is no more than uh, 24 hours old. Okay, thank you so much, and thank we you. hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for joining.